It's 5 a.m. right now. I don't really have ma any makeup. And I'm not even sure if I'm gonna post this because of that site. Reason. And honestly, I can barely even speak, like, not just English, even Persian. It's been around two weeks since the whole protest, revolution, whatever people want to call it, started. And I don't even know what to do. It's like, you know, you're physically here. But you wish you were there, you could at least do something because you're miles away and, you, and all you can do is just tweet, you know, like tweet or like post Instagram stories or like just tell your followers. And you know, what hurts the most is that you actually know that most people, for the lack of a better word, don't care. They don't care, they can't care. Or maybe just, they just don't know where to look or what's going on, like... I know that a lot of bad things are happening in the world, you know. I'm not blind. It's just that... The situation between, like, government oppressing their people in every way possible. Hurting children, rape, murdering, stealing, attacking, hostaging. There's nothing left. And it's not even just people in Iran. They're hurting everyone. You end up growing up with these things, you know, to the point that it becomes really normal. Like, all of those things becomes normal. I remember... Uh, when I first joined Tumblr, people were talking about like pedophilia or like child marriage and everything. And it was so strange to me because I grew up in Iran where people were naturally getting married at the age of nine. Nine. And I remember being like, hey, my friends are like going out with guys. You know, I was around like 15, 14. And I was like, yeah, my friends go out with people at the age of 24, it's normal. But then, I'm 24 now, it's not normal. It's just not normal at all. And, you know, like, some people came to me. One person in my curious girl was like, hey, just start posting, continue posting about the same fangirl stuffs you generally do. And I can't. Like, you know, sometimes when I try, it just physically hurts me because nothing is normal, but I'm supposed to pretend like it's normal. You know, I'm a woman, not religious, never hated. I'm very proud, very loud. I like dancing, I like singing, I like... Showing my hair. My family was born Muslim. I'm not. I'm bisexual. I literally have like a channel with currently 470,000 subscribers. Which promotes the LGBTQ plus community. Like I can go on forever with the reasons with the things that even right now, if I ever were to go back to Iran, would kill me. If I were still in Iran, I wouldn't be alive today. And people just don't understand that. They just expect me to act natural when nothing is normal. And you know, when it actually hits you, You've been doing all these contents, all these things for people that don't care about you, about 
about your family. About him, you're right. It's not even about me. It's just like... I don't know how to get people to understand that it's not even about me at this point at all. It's just that I'm asking them not to expect even more from me when I'm already handling the kind of feeling I'm going through. It's about literal children dying. Some of them are not even protesting. It's like, imagine everything seems normal. Then your brother, your sister goes out. They don't come back because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time while well, they just went out to buy cheese. <laughs> I don't know. People are going to university and they're dying. People who think they're like wearing everything properly, they're doing everything properly, are still being oppressed. That's the problem. I don't know what to do to help it. And that that just hurts. And I know I'm not even allowed to feel this pain because it's not about me, because I'm not even there. It's about saying the man that killed thousands of people that is still oppressing my friends, my family in my country going to United Nation, the same United Nation that is apparently taking care of me as a refugee, which, let's be honest, it hasn't cared about me or my family even as a refugee for the past eight years. But anyway, goes there and holds up the picture of another terrorist. And then apparently other countries are like, even talking about nuclear de- deals with him, even the this like this this person made sure to say that he doesn't care about any of this fa- like countries. Like we grew up, like in our school, I remember they used to like put us in different rows, and they were like, "Say death to this country or death to that country." Say it so loud so people in that country would hear it. Like, they raised us, telling us to hate every other country. And in this protest, we're saying that the enemy was never the other countries. It was the person who's still here, which is the Iranian regime. And people are ignoring us while... The government of other countries are shaking hand with this man, this terrorist, and talking about nuclear deals that can very much kill all of them. We've seen it all. Like, I'm not gonna talk about myself, I mean, in general, in your own. We've seen it all. And you know, sometimes you're like, maybe I'm strong enough to just see it now. But you know, as I scroll through like the news, I'm like, sometimes you're just chalked up. And you're like, why am I still not used to this? Why is it that the simplest thing still like burns me? And I know everyone in Iran are feeling the same, or even outside of Iran. Because we know how it feels, we know how things are, how bad things are, and we know that the news channels just, you know, like, released something, like, very small, and that was it. Like, they they don't want to cover this. We need to still speak. You know, like, when we came here, to another country, we couldn't speak Turkish. We didn't know what evet or higher yes or no meant. Imagine my mom, 30 years old. I was 16, I got my diploma early. I was smart, 
or whatever. My brother was eight. We come to a country, we don't speak the language, we go through like xenophobia, racism. And it's still somehow worth it because in our own country, we would be killed. We would be like, there was nothing, no future, no rights. Even the no rights we have in here is still somehow better than being in our own country, which sucks. It's not supposed to be like that. And we know the reason other news headlines or like basically other news channels don't talk about this enough. Like, you know, if it was even just a normal football game, every little thing would matter. Like, hey, this game, this happened, that happened. But, you know, in the news channels, you know, even by force, because we kept tweeting about it, we kept talking about it, we kept sending messages. They, you know, made like one, two articles and that was it. The reason is because I, we know that the other governments, the other regimes want the Iranian regime to stay. Where else would they get f like cheap oil or the other things they're getting out of hurting us? Currently, Iranian regime has hostages from every single country around the world like people just normal people trying to go to iran as a tourist or not even going to iran like some people were kidnapped they're in or prisons right now not or like they're in iran iran but the iranian regime had gotten them and somehow even they don't matter because of those deals that's even sadder, you know? That's basically why I'm even doing this video because I still have a voice. I still have a way to talk, to say what's happening. I promise, no matter how much my people are being shut down, I don't even care what's gonna happen, like, what's the worst that can happen, you know, like, what is it? Is it everything that's already happening in Iran? Wanna kill me? Come, kill me, I don't care. People younger than me are getting killed right now. I wish I was getting killed. So, it would be just over, you know, I wouldn't have to see other people suffer this much. But at the end of the day, we will win. We will win. And we will remember. And we will be an example to other people who got oppressed. You know, I'm a teacher. Ever since I got here, when I was like 18, I started teaching. And it pains me when I see people around the age you know, I teach every age, but like when I see people who look so much like my younger students are getting killed, we will win. I promise. I know people in Iran are so stubborn. They don't care about being alive anymore because the regime is already killing everyone anyway for the smallest reason at least this way it will be an honorable death i feel it i get it we will win we will win you will remake our country <laughs> we will make it way better than it has been because we already know everything that wasn't given to us everything people told us weren't or rights only for us to understand they were basic human rights everyone should have had and we will know what we've sacrificed who we sacrificed to go there and if you're watching this going through something similar in the future 
You probably know that we've gotten our country back. We won. You can do the same. Stop telling us about how justice never comes, how good never wins. It will. Our fight wasn't about religion, it wasn't about this or that. It was about everything. People tried so hard to make it about the death of one person, even the one is too many. And we're still so heartbroken about it. It's about everything. It's about most of us not even having the right to breathe, to exist. So yeah, if you're watching this, if you're going through anything similar, just know that you're not alone. Things are gonna get better. I want to say to all of them, مجبورمون کردن کردن فراموش کنیم هم دیگر رو دوست داریم خیلی از ما خجالت میکشیدیم بگیم ایرانیم چون میگفتیم ایران همه فقط به دولتمون فکر میکردن به ارزشی فکر میکردن که اونا بهش باور داشتن نه ما و ما خجالت میکشیدیم خیلی ما رو سعی کردن به همون بگن که ترکا اینطوری هن، لورا اینطوری هن، شمالی یا جنوبی یا عربا فهمیدیم هممون یکی هممون یکی شدیم ممنونم و میخوام بدونیم که هممون داخل ایران خارج از ایران هممون با هم یکیم و دولتمون نمیتونه اشکاره بکنه ایرانو پس میگیریم و این به ایرانی خط نمیشه دوستان افغان دوستان سوریه هر جای دیگه دنیا که هستین و دیگران دولت ها دارن بهتون زور میگن ما میبریم شما میبریم شاید خیلی از شما داستان شاهنامه رو بدونین داستان این که چجوری خیلی جنگ و اتفاق افتاد رستمه که پسر خودش رو کشت بدون این که بدون داره به پسر خودش حمله میکنه خیلی که زیر بازی تاج و تخت له شدن و آخرش یه سری اومدن همشونو گرفتن با اینکه میگن شاهنامه پایانش خوشه و همه میگن چجوری این پایان خوشه وقتی آخرش همه چی برباد رفت چون اون پایان شاهنامه نبود پایان شاهنامه رو ما الان داریم مینویسیم و پایان شاهنامه ای که ما می نویسیم خوشم